Hello, Windsor Music friends. I'm Gabriela Diaz, co-artistic director of Windsor Music. I hope you're doing well during this challenging time. We miss seeing you and can't wait to see you again really soon. As some of you may know, tonight was supposed to be our Windsor Music concert that featured violist Kim Kaskashian in the music of Robert and Clara Schumann and Jörg Kurtag. That concert has been postponed to next season. But in the meantime, we thought it would be really fun to make a music video about Kurtag for you. So Kim Kaskashian, Donald Berman, Rafi Popper Kaiser, Ronnie Moore, and I have all recorded ourselves playing solo pieces by Kurtag. So before we get to the music, here's just a little bit of background info about Kurtag. I have to apologize up front. I'm trying to pronounce the Hungarian correctly, but I know I'm massacring so much of it, so please forgive me for my pronunciation. Jerzy Kartag has had a fascinating life, and many of his life experiences come through in his musical writing. He was born in 1926 in Romanian Transylvania and had a relatively calm childhood, playing piano duets with his mom, and apparently he really loved foxtrots and tangos. When he was 13, he heard Schubert's Unfinished Symphony and decided he wanted to become a composer. Most avant-garde music of the time was banned in Hungary and banned all the way up until 1953, so what he heard on the radio was quite limited. He started his serious studies at the Liszt Academy, where he met his future wife, a pianist named Marta, and this guy right here, Jerzy Ligeti, another composer and a personal favorite of mine. Every Sunday, he, Marta, and Ligeti would get together and they would sight-read Mozart operas, with Marta taking the female parts, Ligeti the male parts, and Kurtag would cover the whole orchestra on the piano. After the Hungarian uprising, he spent one year in Paris studying with Mio and Messiaen, and suddenly he heard the modern works of Schoenberg, Webern, Bartok, and Stravinsky, composers who would become very important to him in his musical education. As he remembered the awful isolation he experienced under communist dictatorship, he suffered a mental breakdown. He said, I realized to the point of despair, nothing I had believed to constitute the world was true. He began working with the art psychologist, Marianne Stein. He had a kind of composer's writer's block where he just couldn't compose. She offered the idea of writing music with extreme limits imposed on himself. So only being able to use two notes. He was able to do this and gradually expanded this, adding more and more notes to his compositions. He said, I keep coming back to the realization that one note is almost enough. One note to sum up the essence of a sensation, a happening, a shriek, a sob, a gesture. After his Paris year, he returned to Hungary. He worked as a pianist, chamber music coach, and vocal coach. He is apparently quite an exacting coach. Friends who have worked with him talk about how he could spend hours just on the first bar of a Beethoven quartet, completely picking it apart, examining everything in such detail to find the purest musical meaning in the work. Up until last year, he played beautiful piano duo concerts with his wife, Marta, with music of his own and his own transcriptions of the music of J.S. Bach. And amazingly, he speaks Romanian, Hungarian, German, French, Russian, ancient Greek, and English. Quite a guy. Kim Kashkashian is widely considered to be one of the greatest violists of our time. She's comfortable in many different styles of music, and she won a Grammy for her incredible recording of the solo viola works of Kortag and Ligeti. We're so lucky that Kim lives here in town and teaches at NEC, and we're thrilled to get to play this program of Schumann and Kortag with her next season. Kim worked closely with Kortag when she was living in southern Germany, teaching in Freiburg. She contacted him because she wanted to play some of his solo pieces for him before recording a Kurtag Schumann disc for ECM. 
She calls him her midlife crisis teacher and mentor and mentioned that he opened up so many concepts about music, sound, and technique to her. He continued to coach and guide her over the span of a decade, not only in his own compositions, but also in her preparation for the ECM recording of the Bartok, Utvush, and Kurtog concertos. His comments and solutions and understanding the unfinished Bartok score were invaluable to her. Also, she recounted a vivid memory of playing Brahms sonatas with him. He's truly a great pianist. She also mentioned his relentless behavior towards performers and said that while receiving plenty of constant critical feedback, one always knew he did it purely for the love of the music and wanting to share his vision. And now we'll hear Kim in a selection of Kurtog's Signs, Games, and Messages, a collection of musical miniatures and tributes that he's been writing and adding to for the past 50 years. The first is Perpetual Motion, and this was written as a gift for Agnes Vadas, who was a Hungarian violinist, teacher, political activist, and writer. It's a fun, buoyant, dancey piece with sudden interruptions, but the piece continues on its merry way as if nothing had happened. And the second of these is Four Intertwined Bodies to the Exhibition by Sari Gerloshi. And Sari Gerlashi was a Hungarian painter and costume designer who inspired this beautiful work. Perpetual motion. <laughs> Next is Homage a John Cage, subtitled Faltering Words. In this piece, Kurtag is paying tribute to the great American composer, John Cage. What's interesting about this piece is the way Kurtag handles silences. So every time Kim stops or pauses in this piece, there's notated a comma, a comma like you would see in a sentence instead of a musical rest that you would have to count. And he tells us that each comma should not be equal to any other. So this allows for a certain amount of freedom and improvisation on the part of the performer in the way they handle silences and the notes surrounding the silences. And this seems to me like when you're trying to talk to someone and you have a lot you want to say, but you can't quite get the words out. Homage of John Cage. Thank you. 
The last two pieces we'll hear from Kim are Silent Lines to Laszlo Dobsai and Doloroso. Laszlo Dobsai, who was the dedicatee of this beautiful, soulful work, was a Hungarian ethnomusicologist, music historian, and conductor. And he actually premiered several of Kurtag's works as a conductor. Doloroso is a really remarkable piece. Every fragment that you hear in this piece has an emotional instruction that goes with it from Kurtag. And these range from playing without color as softly as you can to really letting the sound open up and allowing it to have a lot of expression and everything you could imagine in between. So in this short work, we really go through a whole range of emotions. Silent lines to Laszlo Dobzai. Doloroso. Now we will hear the magical Rafi Popper Kaiser play Oz Hit for solo cello. Oz Hit was originally part of a song cycle that Kurtag wrote in the 1960s for soprano using texts from a 16th century Protestant preacher. In this version for solo cello, the cello line is basically the soprano line, so Kurtag includes under the notes for the cello the text that the soprano would be singing. So this just helps the cellist know what every note means. Kurtag also writes at the bottom of the piece 
that the text is just there to be helpful and not intended to be sung out loud. So sadly, we will not hear Rafi sing in this piece. The text in this piece is, Thy faith's not dreaming, but is a living being. To his maker cleaves it ever, embrace him, and as the daylight sheds light all over the world, it enlightens all. In hearts such hope it engenders, wherewith the sinful their own pardon may dare to gain above. Next is the piece Nepdal Fele im Volkstun or in the folk style. In this piece, you can really hear the influence of Hungarian folk music on Kurtag. A really cool thing about this one is the way that it looks on the page. So when we read music, we're used to reading from left to right and for the music to take up the whole length and width of a sheet of paper. But this looks quite different. So as you can see, there are four lines of music, but they're each a different length. And Kurtag does this to show us the four musical sentences or musical phrases in the piece. And it's incredibly helpful as a performer to see the music laid out this way, because it really makes you feel like you understand how Kurtag was conceiving of this piece musically. This next one is called Fairy de Autonne, or Autumn Fairy. To me, this feels like one of the most programmatic of the signs, games, and messages for violin. You can really hear this tiny little fairy flapping her tiny little wings, fluttering around, scurrying around, gathering up the stuff she might need for winter. And in addition to this very vivid musical material that Kurtag writes to describe this little fairy, he also asks us to use a very fun implement, which is a metal mute or a lead mute. And this is a mute that used to be made out of lead. Now it's covered in a nice rubber so that it doesn't poke a hole in the top of your instrument if it falls off. And this dramatically changes the color and volume of the sound that you're making on an instrument. So I'll just demonstrate that a little bit. So this is normal violin playing. And then with the mute.
So this really highlights and enhances the sound world of this tiny little fairy. Next is the Carenza jig. This one has definitely a very dance-like quality to it, as you might imagine from its title, but I think it's also quite humorous. There are really wild changes of character throughout this entire piece. And one of my favorite moments, Kurtog writes a very detailed instruction underneath one of the bars as to how to play that bar. And it says, like the screeching of a bird of prey. So look out for those birds of prey in this one. Now we'll hear about some Kurtag written for the clarinet from the fabulous Ronnie Moore, co-artistic director of Windsor Music. Hi everybody, I'll be playing A Letter from Afar to Ursula, dedicated to Ursula Holliger, to be played by her husband and oboist, Heinz Holliger, here on clarinet. Ursula Holliger was a famed harpist who lived in Boston for a time. And I actually had the experience to play Ravel's Introduction in Allegro with her in 2010, which was an unforgettable musical moment in my life. This, of course, it will be my letter from afar to you all.
Now here's the spectacular Don Berman to play and talk about some of Kurtag's solo piano music. Hi everyone, sorry I can't be there with you today, but I thought uh, it'd be fun to play you some of the Kurtag pieces from his collection called Games, or in Hungarian he says, Yadatop. If you say it real quick, no one will notice your pronunciation is not so great. You can see a lot these pieces have diagrams and various playful graphic constructions. The first one has a little sort of almost looks like an oscilloscope ending with a cannonball at the end. It's a really fun way to bring kids and adults to uh, composition and learning how to play. And I think he did it for himself as much as for teaching kids. On the bottom is one of his, I guess I, I would call it his motto, one of his motto pieces. And the, the motto that he sprinkles throughout the book is like this. It says, flowers we are, frail flowers. It's a beautiful sentiment and very Kurtagian. And uh, here's one of those flower pieces. He really lets you revel in the sort of the timelessness of just simple single notes. Here's a um, fun one on the top. You can see a line, from a note from a line to another note, and it's called Waltz. And uh, there's a lot of license as to how to do it, but here's one way. <laughs> This one on the bottom is called Gallop, and uh, I love the phrase markings on the last two lines. It looks like uh, horse's feet, the clip clop. Um, and it's lovely, lovely little piece. This one on the top here is a Sarabande. It has more of his beautiful phrase markings through the notes, sort of speaking style markings above the notes that sort of mean to stress or under stress or to hang on to the sound of each note. And here's Kurtag's Sarabande. little Bach motif at the end. The one on the top is called uh, Falling Asleep. Perfect for a kid. 
You can see just going down blah, 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 with while other little events are happening. But the one I wanted to play you is a uh, scale from one to eight on the bottom of the page. And it's not one through eight as in do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, but it's one through eight as in the numbers. Play it once, play it twice, play it three times. It's great because um, rhythm is not really the focus of pedagogical studies enough. And uh, this one, super fun. Starting with one, moving on to two, and then three. Here's another flower piece. This one is marked simply um, Blumen Dimension, Flowers We Are. Toward the end of the book uh, is one of several portraits. And I love this portrait at the top. You can see, I think, how it um, accumulates notes from single lines into blocks of sound, sometimes as many as 10 notes, from one note to 10 notes and back. At the end, he says, um, ad lib, repeat without finishing, which would take a while. And you can see it's really hard to stop once you start this piece. It's just a lovely loop. Um, I'll play it twice, hopefully. Thanks for listening, everyone. I look forward to playing for you in person in the not too distant future. Be of good cheer, and I hope everyone is safe and happy and healthy. Thank you so much for watching and listening. It means so much to us to still be able to communicate with you in this way. We hope to play for you again soon and to see you soon. But in the meantime, please stay safe and healthy and well and keep lots of music in your lives. We've added a link below in the description box under here that will take you to a performance of Kurtag and Marta playing some of his Bach transcriptions. And we hope that you'll take a listen. It's glorious music and truly incredible music making. See you soon. <laughs>